Hi YouTube, welcome back to WTFRC Cars. So we have the Flysky SF ST8 upgraded version transmitter and I wanted to get this one in because I've been asked quite a few times why people that for whatever reason they either don't like using the wheel controllers or they can't use them and quite a few people have asked me do Flysky make a stick transmitter that they can use. So we've got this one in it's basically can control pretty much anything from drones, aeroplanes, robots, excavators, uh, rock crawlers, RC cars, pretty much anything you like. Um, there's a reason I'd say go for the upgraded version and I'll show you a few of the things that it comes with that just makes your life a little bit easier if you want to convert this controller to use on a car. It uses the ANT protocol. So it will work with all the receivers for the G7P. So if you've got them already, um, or that's what you're wanting to use, you don't have to use the six channel dual antenna one that comes with this. It has got quite a lot of functionality though. And I believe this one is looking around about the 80 pound mark delivered to UK, but I will put links in description. So let's get you in a little bit closer so you can have a, uh, good idea what comes in box right so let's have a look what we get in box so it does come nicely packaged you get a little quick start guide you can download the full instructions for it and fly skies badged it up for me again so that's quite nice thanks fly sky now because this is the upgraded version we do get this extra packet in the box and it comes with the adapter kit to change this to make it auto return which will be probably a lot more use for you for an RC car you do get a bunch of little screws and you do get this adapter bracket that goes to back that lets you attach the RF module so in theory you can buy the external RF module and you should be able to um, not only so you should be able to not only connect to the ant protocol receivers but you should also be able to connect to at least some of the um, receivers for the mb4 and the pro but we'll have to look into that so the controller itself let's get this out and it does come with a six channel dual antenna and external voltage monitoring receiver so the actual transmitter itself it's quite nice on the back of it you've got two extra buttons you've got two variable dials on the top that self center you've got the external port to let you put the brackets on and connect an RF module you do have a removable insert in the top here and that lets you fit an external antenna if you want you've got USB-C so you can use it for the uh, firmware updates and controlling all the um, sims on the PC and you've got a 3.5mm jack port and that allows you to connect it to another controller so you can put it in training mode and uh, like if somebody that knows how to fly aeroplanes they can let you have a go at flying but then take over if you get stuck or same way RC cars boats anything like that it does run on four AA batteries but it does have the JST connector and you do have a little insert in the bottom of here that you can take out to give you even more room to fit a 2S LiPo on the front you've got the jog wheel and you can push it to enter you've got a menu button and an exit to back out You've got a uh, two position switch, another two position, two fully variable dials, a three position switch and another two position. And then you've got these for controlling your trim and then a power button in the middle. So it's quite a nice controller, quite a nice feeling controller. Um, interested to see why these are clear. I wonder if Flysky is going to do a light kit for it. Um, both these thumbsticks are adjustable in height. So you can screw the top off. Then you screw the bottom up. And then you tighten the top back up. 
and that lets you control the height of the sticks and they have got the anti-slip little spikes on top quite comfortable to use and you're not going to let go of them you do have a screw hole in the top of this for mounting a phone holder and you've got the little hole for mounting a lanyard to it but let's get you in for a close-up look and I'll run you through some of the right so let's get into this so that's your power button it will warn you if any of the switches aren't in the home position just so your RC doesn't shoot off and does something you don't want it to so on this main screen we have these four little trim settings and these depend on where you've got your trim set to so it will beep to tell you that it's centered you've got your transmitter battery level and the voltage you've got your quick access into your timers you've got your quick access into your sensors and you can choose whether you want them showing on home page and you can set an alarm then you've got your model type quick access to that so we've got delta wing fixed wing multi-access which is your drones excavator robot glider heli boat and car we're going to leave it on car um, you can quick access your model memories so you can change your model rename it copy and reset it so that's basically what your layout is on your screen if you press and hold the top one you'll get into your um, monitor for your positions of all your switches and everything so you can see what your channels are doing press exit to come out if you press and hold the bottom one that'll lock this screen so you can't accidentally change anything in your menus if we come out of that so we go into his first setting which is TX you've got your model setting where you can change your name and everything again you've got trainer mode so this is how you activate your trainer mode and set it up you've got stick mode so if you watch when we change these it changes what the assignment channels are now when you're setting this up for a car um, basically you have to look what channel is on what and then so on this if you had it set like this you could have channel 2 as throttle and you could have channel 4 as steering um, you can change whether this auto returns or not and that's why I say go for the uh, upgraded one because it does come with a full auto return kit so you can have basically both these auto returning and they are quite nice um, quite nice movement on these sticks uh, they are full bearings instead of bushings and you can go through and change this and if you do want to have so if you did want the um, non-returning stick on this one you can swap these over quite easily to change it to whatever mode you like so if you prefer your throttle on this one your steering on that you can basically set it up however you want uh, calibration mode I would would advise doing this whenever you set a controller up so basically I have to set all sticks to center and then you go in move them over the full travel move the two variable dials on the top over their full channel travel and press OK then that's fully calibrated we go into system settings um, for switches so I believe you can swap any of these switches out for three position and then come in here and change it so you can change your switches to however you like and key one and two is the buttons on the back so that's how you activate them um, on to system settings you've got language which is English and Chinese uh, you've got sounds which you can set to system alarm or system and alarm So you can choose what beeps it does um, you've got your volume your alarm time is how long before it starts beeping at you you've also got a vibration motor in there which you can set to system and alarm or system or alarm and grade is the intensity of the vibration motor you've got your batteries which you can set to 2s lipo aa or other where you set your own alarm for other then leds 
you can have it off, red, green, blue, yellow, uh, cyan, purple, white. Uh, colour, this is where it just flows through, changing colour. Or you can have it on power, which will just change red when your batteries are going flat. Uh, you can change your LED brightness. You can also change the screen brightness. You've got your contrast level of your screen as well. And then you can have the screen so it times out if you want. So from 15 seconds, 30, 60, 90, 2 minutes, 3 minutes, 5, 10, and then always on. And then your auto shutdown, which you can have from 10 minutes in 10 minute intervals or up to an hour. Then you've got your timer settings, so you can have both set both timers set as up or down. You can change what button starts it, you can change what button stops and resets it, and you can set an alarm for it. And basically, in this one, is where you can set the throttle. So you can have your throttle position, uh, so it triggers it. So you can set a throttle position, once it goes above it, it'll then start it, once it goes below it, it'll stop it. And the percentage is the percentage it triggers at. So you can change that to however you want. Or you can have any of the uh, actual switches themselves do it. Uh, switch setting is back to that one where you set all your switches on off, tell them what position switches they are. Uh, firmware update is to update firmware about, will tell you information about the controller and help center will give you a QR code to download or you can go to more and you get the details of FlySky. So if we then go into RX menu we've got bind settings so you can change the output, you got PWM iBus and SBus, PPM iBus and SBus and then you've also got your frequency of your servos and you can set it in one way or two way transmission you got your fail safe where you can go in and you can set up all the channels and what actual percentage you want them as your sensors is where your sensors are up here and you can set the alarm or whether you want them on home page or not then RF setup, you've got your internal RF on off, you've got your external RF and you can set what mode it's using. Then your iBus settings, you need the actual receiver bound up to do this but that's where you decide what your iBus is doing. And sensor calibration for the BVD and the altitude uh, module. And then GPS settings for setting up the GPS time zone, calibrating it, your GPS display of what it's doing. And then you can reset your start point. Then model setup. Now these conditions, these are more what you'd use for aeroplanes, I believe. I've not really looked into that a lot. But basically the conditions of what the buttons are set to. I don't know if this is for when it turns on or if you can change like different setups at different points when you're using it. But you've got your rate control. So this is like your dual rates and you can set this for your sticks for your first four channels. And then you can set your rate of that channel so it moves both endpoints at the same time. And then you can also set your EXP curve. And you can set that for each of the four channels. Then you've got a throttle curve where you've got multiple points. And you can go in and you can set each one of these. So you can set them points however you feel that you need them. So you can call you can create your own 
sort of custom throttle curve and then throttle hold you pretty much use this mostly on an helicopter I believe so you can set the RPM but then still change the is it pitch up blades not really sure but you don't you're not really going to use that on an RC unless you've got a specific need for it and then we've got a general menu so we can go into here and you can access your monitor again from there but you can quick press the button you've got your reverse for all your servos all your channels you've got endpoints for each one of your channels then you've got channel speed so you can use this if you wanted to say set one of the switches um, to a winch and you wanted to slow it down you can if you want to slow your steering down you can auxiliary channels is where you assign because your first four are assigned to these so five six seven and eight you assign to all your switches or dials as you uh, as you need them then your trims is just so you can set your actual trim up on each one so that's for your stick controls and then you've got all your mixers that you can go into and set up however you like and depending on what model you've got depends on uh, the model specific pre-made mixers that will show up for you like V-Tail and stuff like that and basically now we've got a receiver we have two antennas so you should get good range it's got a bind button it's also got a bind port You've got a port for your voltage monitor, a port for your sensors, and a port for the servo extensions. So you can add another um, four channels to this, but you'd only be able to assign ten of them. And then you've got channels one to eight on this side, and it will operate from 3.5 to 9 volt. So let's quickly power it off. And I believe there's only five screws, so the two bottom... Uh, two at top and then one there to remove the entire back the battery compartment um, you take that off and then you've got like a floor in it that you can just pop out so you can pop this out and you've got the um, JX connector in the bottom but to allow you more room you can pop the floor out and that gives you room to put a 2S LiPo you've got a bit of an extension hole in that side as well and Flysky do advertise around 10 hours off of 1300 milliamp hour batteries so I like using these EBL 2800 so you should be looking around 20 hour mark or something with these and you have got your code that you can scratch off to make sure you've got a genuine controller but that just about covers it so let's wrap this one on so there you have it it is a really nice, really well made controller. We do have proper bearings in these instead of bushings, which makes them really, really smooth to use. A hell of a lot of configuration. It is kind of a uh, sort of a mix of quite a few of the other controllers that Flysky's made of it years, and they picked the best bits out of each one. Do appreciate it coming with USB C. Uh, it's much more common connector now. Interesting that you can fit both a sort of um, internal to external antenna adapter to let you put a proper bigger antenna on there if you want to. And the external RF module is an interesting one. Um, we'll have to see how that works with the uh, module that I've got, see if it'll run with that. You do have the buttons on the back, the snapback dials on the top shoulders and it does look like you can swap these out for two or three way switches depending on what you need and then you have got the option in the menu to tell it that it's a three way switch not a two way two variable dials quite a nice screen and quite interesting that it comes with a dual antenna six channel receiver so I mean maybe this is one that you could use as a speed run transmitter uh, with the external module or the external antenna and the dual channel uh, receivers you could be getting quite a lot of range out of that um, the 
fact that it comes with the auto return parts as well I will be doing a video on that and it comes with a DVB sensor uh, BVD sorry for the receiver but that's been uh, long enough for a first look that is the Flysky ST8 upgraded version and you've been watching WTFRC Cars. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Share to friends and family. And I'll catch you guys again in the next one.